Good morning, everybody. Uh, better wait, I just saw a car flying up the drive there, so somebody's quite late. So don't look at them when they come in, it gives me embarrassment too much. Well, uh, it's here, finally, uh, COVID, everything willing. We are here for our nativity this morning, uh, so we're looking forward to uh, what uh, happens, okay? And we're very special, Mary and Joseph. And, and I just hope, Joy, that's not prophetic to have one in the front of you. But uh, it's just lovely uh, to see you all gathered in. Now, we have a few announcements just to go through uh, for the next few days. Uh, tonight is our Carls by Candlelight, which is booked out on Eventbrite. Uh, so most people have figured out what to do and they've booked the place for tonight. Some of you did speak to me and I've booked the tickets as well. Uh, so that's for tonight's Carl service at half past six. If you haven't been able to get a, a, a ticket for that, we also are doing a rerun on Wednesday night, Wednesday the 22nd of December. There's still some tickets available for that. So you're very welcome uh, to join with us. It will be slightly different. Tonight is our traditional service. Uh, Wednesday night will still be candlelit, but we're going to have just a couple of carols and then a couple of more modern worship songs. Uh, so that is on Wednesday night. Uh, now that, Jack will be doing the epilogue of that. That will be his last ever official date here, uh, unless he comes back next year to help out. But, uh, yes, bad daddy, we just have a uh, uh, <laughs> It's not going to work otherwise. Okay. The angel's kicking off. Jesus. <laughs> Ready to see? Sweet round of applause. Ready The joy of nativity. Anyway, so uh, we've got that uh, We've got that happening on Wednesday. Then Christmas Eve, providing we're not in curfew at that stage, we'll be back here at 11 p.m. for a candle at, at midnight communion. Uh, we'll not be coming to the front. Uh, We'll just be using um, we'll just be using a little single cups, so you're very welcome to join with us. And then Christmas Day, who's excited about Christmas Day? Anybody? Why are you excited about Christmas? Christmas Day, anybody? Turkey? Okay, that's you, Carson. Not any of the rest of us, but okay. Presents, okay. So what I want you to do, if it's feasible, no live animals, please. If it's feasible and you can do it, and boys and girls, I want to encourage you to bring a toy with you or a present, and we'll do a socially distanced uh, play or look at what you've been given uh, on Christmas Day. Isn't that a good idea? It can always go horribly wrong, but anyway, Christmas Day. And then next Sunday, which actually is Boxing Day, we'll only have one service here at half nine, and that will be just a Holy Communion service. So that is all the announcements. After the service today, uh, we, we, we were nearly not going to, oh yes, Charlie, thank you, prayer time on, say, many assistants, keep me right, our last prayer meeting of the year will be this Wednesday at 10 a.m., but after the service today, we're going to go down to the hall, just at, at socially distant, we want to uh, be able to give Jack a, a bit of a, a card and a, and a presentation, uh, so you're very welcome to join with us there. It will be socially distant, there may be coffee, but... <laughs> It'll probably be the last coffee of this year, and the way things are going here in, in church. So please join with us in the hall for some refreshments afterwards. Uh, Holly Reeves, now on sale, still on sale. Uh, you can pick one up, speak to Maud. She's the keeper of the keys and the money and everything else. So um, if, if you want a Holly Reed, please. And, and all of it goes towards church funds. Now also, uh, some of you will be aware that we've had... Uh, Damage to the church at the start of the week. Uh, we had the lead stolen from the roof or parts of the roof. Uh, so um, we're in the process of trying to get that replaced. And, and I kind of joke, you know, we, we love everybody in this church, don't we? And we want to see everybody saved. But there's some people that I maybe don't want to see saved. But I shouldn't say that as a minister. But you know what I'm saying. But um, anyway, I want to thank Mark Crow this week uh, for really... In, in the midst of a really busy time, sending a couple of guys out, and they've made the roof watertight. So that's been fantastic. So I want to thank them. Now I think that's everything. Uh, what's our next slide? Yes. So we're going to light uh, the candles, I think. Or are we? We're going to sing first. Don't panic. All right. Don't look. I'll be like that. Okay. All right. What's the next slide after that one? Right, we're going to light the candles. See? We know what we're doing. See, I normally have the laptop here in front of me, but we're trying something different this morning, and uh, it's working so far. So we're going to light 
the candles, okay? Now this, this sounds a bit strange, but this is called the candle of love, and I'm trying not to say it in a very white voice. <laughs> See, the children in the family say, what are you talking about? But well, anyway, this, this is the way it works. So what was the first candle we lit? Anybody remember the very first week of Advent? Hope, okay, brilliant. Next one? Peace. Peace, and last week was? Joy, brilliant, okay. And what we're going to do this week was really, because it's normally we would have the boys and girls up to light them, but we will, I will light a couple of them, and then the last one we get the <laughs> Somebody volunteer? No? Okay. I think we're a easel. Right, Robbie, bring her up. <laughs> but didn't he not be asked? Hello? <laughs> I uh, know, what, what, what I want you to do is light a candle, is that okay? Brilliant. Okay. Oh. Not in the mood. Well, look, on behalf, we had a very special baptism last week. We had Alice was baptized last week, and her older sister is moving on. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that we're actually here, and we pray for safety, Lord, as we as we celebrate your nativity. But Lord, we remember that this day, Lord, we remember the love that you gave to each one of us when you sent your Son to this earth. And so, Lord, we just pray over everything that happens during the service. Lord, we pray that we may we may hear and experience the true gospel message. We ask all these things in your lovely name. Amen. We're going to stand and we're going to sing our first hymn. Oh, we let the time of that. Can you please stand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
This is where I hand over uh, to uh, the Sunday School and the uh, young people. Welcome to the Impossible Promise, a Christmas story. My name is Jessica and I'll be narrating our story today and more or less directing our little instant nativity. On the other side is my friend Martha, who will mostly be playing an angel. There will be a lot of booming in the story, so I think everyone in the room will make together whenever God does something amazing. When you see the boom sign, all you need to do is throw your arms in the air and shout, Boom! Let's have a little practice. Three, two, one. Boom! Excellent. Three, two, one. Boom! Just like that, out of nowhere, there he was, an angel. And Mary was terrified. Maybe it was the suddenness of his arrival. Maybe it was the shock of the surprise. Maybe it was because... He was no fat baby with wings, but a bright, shiny, otherworldly creature sent on from the throne of God. Or maybe it had to do with what he said. Hello, favorite one. God is with you. Mary was simply a young woman from a little town called Nazareth in the region of Galilee. She had never expected anything like this to happen to her. What did the angel mean? What was this all about? She was so confused and troubled to say the least. And the angel Gabriel understood that. Don't be afraid. This is a good thing. God is pleased with you and wants to do something amazing for you. So here's what is going to happen. You will give birth to a son called Jesus. He will be great. In fact, he will be called the Son of God. It was the promise. The promise to Eve of a child to crush the serpent's head. The promise to Abraham that through his family, God would one day bless the world. The promise would finally come true, and it sounded amazing. But Mary had a practical question, very practical. By the custom of her day, she was legally promised to be married to a man named Joseph. But they hadn't had the wedding yet, so she asked quite rightly, And quite early, Gabriel gave her an answer, a mysterious answer, guaranteed to surprise her even further. God's Holy Spirit will come upon you. His power, his power will overshadow you. So, so your son will be holy too. Your son of God. It sounds incredible. I know. But your cousin Elizabeth is having a baby. She's six months pregnant. In fact, as and as you know. She, she is well past childbearing age. For God can do anything, even something that everyone else thinks is possible. Let him do this impossible thing for me. I will be his servant and do what he will ask. And with that, just as suddenly as he had come, the angel disappeared. <coughs> Three, two, one, boom! <coughs> just like that, out of nowhere. It was the last thing Joseph wanted to hear. Mary, the woman he had promised to marry, was expecting a baby. And there was no way that the baby was his. <laughs> what could he do? She had broken the promise, broken the legal engagement that her family made with him. And worst of all, she had broken his heart. Oh. 
He could have embarrassed her and made a big deal out of what she had done. But Joseph was a good and a kind man. He decided to end their engagement, but to do it quietly. Before he could put his plan into action, however, three, two, one, boom! He had a visit from the angel as well. The angel came to him that night in a dream. When Joseph woke up, he did exactly what the angel told him and took Mary as his wife. Three, two, one, boom! Just then, <laughs> just like that, another surprise. The Roman ruler Augustus wanted to find out how many people were in his vast empire. So he ordered everyone under his control to return to their hometown to be counted. Joseph was from Bethlehem, the town where King David once lived. So he and Mary had to travel way down south to be counted in the census. It was 90 miles or so, and despite what you might have seen in your school nativity day, they probably had the walk. Sorry little giraffe, it can't have been easy. <laughs> when they arrived, they needed a place to stay, but so did all of Joseph's other relatives. And by the time they had got to Bethlehem, all the nice upstairs rooms where families usually kept their guests were full. So Mary and Joseph had to stay in the downstairs room where the animals were kept for the night. And in there, among the animals and the straw, that Mary gave birth to Jesus. So she wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger. That's the quickest Jesus birth. Lord, help us be like Mary, who answered when he asked. Help us learn to give and serve the model of the cross. Lord, help us be like Joseph, a man who is kind and just. Help us listen when you speak and teach us how to trust. No, shepherds gather and angels too. It's almost time for you to make your entrance. Nearby in the hills, outside of Bethlehem, there were shepherds guarding their flocks of sheep. The night was still, the stars were shining, all was quiet, apart from the odd sheepy ba. And then, <laughs> three, two, one, boom! <laughs> that angel appeared again. The light that surrounded him surrounded the shepherds too. It turned the night as bright as white and gave those shepherds an almighty fright. said that. Three, two, one, boom! The sky was... A sky full of angels joined him. A crowd, a multitude, a heavenly host, and like an otherworldly choir, or a flash mob sent from heaven, they shouted out their praises to God. Angels we have heard in high. Everybody stand. Lovely. Thank you.
highway they went, as suddenly as they had appeared. And the shepherds, still shaking, said to one another, So off they went, hurrying, running, racing to the place the angel had revealed to them. And there was Mary, and there was Joseph, and there was the baby, just like the angel had said, lying in a manger. So the shepherds told Mary and Joseph everything the angel had told them about the baby, how he was the Messiah, God's long-promised one, finally come to his people. And Mary kept those words like a treasure in her heart to wonder and ponder over the days and weeks and years to come. Then back to the hills the shepherds went, praising God for all that they had seen and heard. No longer quiet, no longer still, but shouting and singing like angels. Thank you, Lord, for angel songs that shout aloud, that shout aloud the Saviour's birth. Show us how to live in ways to sing again of peace on earth. It's time for our Star Watchers now. Part 
of a much bigger set of events that link back to the beginning of everything and forward to forever. They link back to the creation of the world. Three, two, one, boom! When God made men and women to love him and each other, the world he created, and they link back to the promise that God made the nation, that one day he would send them a king, like their best king, David, who set up God's own kingdom for everyone on earth. Jesus the newborn, to, f- to fill Mary all those promises, just like as the angel said, descended from David. He was God's one son. He was God's own son, sent to crush the power of evil. But that was just the beginning of the world changing event. That his, he, that was his birth. For it links forward to the grown up Jesus who healed the sick and fed the hungry and welcomed the outcast to show what life in God's kingdom was like. It was forward to his death where his sacrifice defeated the power of evil by taking away shame and guilt and punishment for every wrong thing that anyone would ever do. It links forward to his resurrection from the dead where he paved the way for our resurrection. It links forward to his ascension where he reigns at God's side and it links forward to the cup the coming of his Holy Spirit, who lives inside everyone who follows him and helps them to live like he did. And finally, it links forward even further, still to 3,000 years of history, to you and me, and then beyond to eternity, when three, two, one, boom, God will make a new heaven and a new earth, where he will be our king forever. Thank you so much for being with us today and for helping us tell God's new story. So let's give a big bless our young man woman to our Mary. And let's give a big no need to worry to our Joseph. And let's give a big moo back off to all our animals. And let's give a big surprise, don't be afraid to our angels. And let's give a great big don't be afraid, you are my barn, barmy to all our shepherds. And finally, let's give a great big twinkle, twinkle, little star to all our shore watchers. Everybody stay there. Wasn't that wonderful? Actually, I found a replacement for Jack. Jessica, what are you doing next week? <laughs> brilliant, brilliant sermon, by the way. That was wonderful. Uh, I just want to finish with a short thought. Uh, and then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get a photograph of the boys and girls and the rowdy angel. Yes, baby Jesus is sleeping, so just leave it. That's great. Louisa. Hello. No, it's not. She thinks the baby talking to her. It's not. But anyway, it's just, uh, it's, just, it's just wonderful to see this. It's wonderful, especially in the times that we're living, to actually be here and celebrating this nativity together. We should have called it the Mass Nativity. That would have been a good one. But uh, and I want to thank Jack and Joy. We're going to do that in a wee moment. That'll be down in the hall. But everybody, please join with us in the hall after the service. Uh, there is going to be some coffee. And enjoy it because it'll be your last coffee this year in church. Well, socially distanced in the hall. Uh, there's a couple of visitors with us this morning, so it's lovely to see you, Brian and Louisa. Thank you. Big surprise to see you here. But um, it's lovely that you're joining with us. Way back to my youth group many, many, many years ago, but it's just lovely that you're here. So, I want to leave just one little verse of scripture. Now, what candle did we light today? Anybody remember? Love. We, we lit the candle of love, okay? And really, this whole thing of nativity is the gospel message rolled up. And it speaks about the love of God and the love that he has for every single person here. Now, the technology works because I left the sermon sitting somewhere else, as I normally do. But it's not really a sermon. It's just a short 
thought. And quite simply, we have a verse that we use in our little strap line for church, and it's from 1 Corinthians 13. And it's normally a, a, a piece of scripture that we use during weddings. Why do you think anybody we use one? Did anybody hear of 1 Corinthians 13 at their wedding? Any of these older people, do you remember back that far? Stood at the front of the church and said, I do. No? Okay, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about love and it gives us the many aspects of what love is. But for us as Christians, this, quite simply, is love encapsulated in all our lives. Jesus came as a baby that we all might have life. And I always say, have life more abundantly. And this verse, actually from the end of that passage, quite simply it says this. It says, we don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog. Anybody make it through the fog this morning here? It's quite prophetic, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. Isn't that an amazing promise for the days in which we live? Oh, excellent. Must be your time for me to finish. But that the sun shines bright, we'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us. Knowing him directly, just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness comes, we have three things to do to lead us towards him. And this is lovely, boys and girls. It says, trust steadily in God. Hope unswervingly and this is it love extravagantly and the best of these is love so we're going to pray we're going to bow our heads we're going to close in prayer and then we're going to sing our final hymn which is away in a manger amen just had to check that nobody looked panic when i say we're going to sing away in a manger let us pray lord we just thank you for this time of year for nativity for the simple message of the Christmas story. And Lord, we just pray that that love that you show to each one of us, Lord, that we will grasp hold of it. Lord, that we will love extravagantly for you. And so Lord, as we prepare to go from this place this morning, we pray a real blessing on all our young people, Lord. We thank you for the work that has been put into it by the leaders. And Lord, we just pray that you will bless them. Lord, we thank you for Jack and Lord for uh, the service, Lord, that he has given to us, Lord, about these past three years, Lord, and for joy. And we pray, Lord, that as they move from here, Lord, that you will really cover them with your Holy Spirit, that you will bless them, Lord, and that you will indeed bless their ministry. And so, Lord, we just pray now, Lord, that your love will be in all our hearts and lives this morning. And we all said... Or we all said what? Boom. Yeah. You ready? Three, two, one. Boom. I think I finish all our prayers like that. <laughs> Amen. We're going to stand together and sing our final carol. Boys and girls, stay at the front, okay? Because we want a picture of you all. But we're going to stand and sing away in a manger.
counts a blessing, but uh, when you sit down, can you wait for the direction of the Lord? Because the boys and girls need a picture taken with their leaders, so we'll do that at the end. But I just want to get the old uh, <laughs> track and trace picture. So if you want to fix your hair quickly, please do so. If you want to do the picture, cover your face quickly. Amen. That's wonderful. Okay. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. And we all say it. Amen. Oh, come on. We, we all say it. Amen. Amen. We may be seated. And the wardens just follow the direction of the wardens. Maybe they may down to the floor for uh, some clean uh, coffee and a quick, a quick presentation.